Hi guys, Zong here, back with another math video. Today we're gonna use a, a rule that we did in a recent, that we used in a recent mass points video. Uh, uh, some of you may not have uh, very grasped, so I'm gonna prove it. And the rule is called Stewart's theorem. Oh man, it's a laggy day today. Okay, so Stewart's theorem. Uh, so you have the triangle to your right. Yeah, Stewart's theorem basically states that. Uh, so um, I'm gonna go with the easier version because the easier version is easy to understand. So d a d plus m a n equals b m b plus c. Okay, so this is this is like easy to understand for me because all I have to do is remember, dad and a man put a bomb in the sink. So uh, this is the version I like. I mean, it's easy to understand. So I'm gonna go about proving this very useful trick today. Um, and to start off, um, try proving it yourself. Um, pause the video if you need to. Okay, going on. So first, you, you have to use the law of cosines on, let's see, n and n d b, n d b. Okay, so you have to use law of cosines on this. So uh, let's mark the vertices. So this is a. Yeah, I don't know what that was. A b c. So let's try to find, and this is d. So let's try to find angle. C D A. So using a law of cosine, we know that n squared and don't worry if you don't know a law of cosines, uh you'll probably learn it um in like middle school or something. Um but basically law I should write it right here. Law of cosine is a squared plus b squared minus two a b cosine alpha equals c squared and that's where like you know this is a this is b and c is the this side you're trying to find the long side and alpha is the space in between so angle let's let's label this angle as alpha okay to make things easy so cosine alpha equals p squared let's do the same let's do the same for uh m and d and this is c and this is cosine i mean this isn't cosine it's 180 minus alpha Okay, so uh, we do the same thing. So uh, d squared plus m squared ah lag sorry minus two d m cosine one eighty minus alpha equals c squared. So uh, now. What's interesting is that uh, you you want to get rid of the cosine. I mean, the cosine isn't part of this theorem, so you're just like, ew, I don't want the cosine. So let's try to get rid of the cosine. Now, another trigonometric identity we need to know is that cosine alpha. Ah, that that that. Okay, cosine alpha. That's an S equals negative cosine. My my my. It just keeps getting worse. One eighty minus alpha okay so this is this is something you need to know so cosine alpha is negative cosine 180 minus alpha so let's just sub that in uh let's sub in for 180 cosine 180 minus alpha so that would turn in that would turn d squared plus n squared oh sorry it's not n it's m sorry for the confusion it's m i must have looked like a really big idiot right then for a second but so d squared plus m squared minus 2 d m actually if you sub this if you sub cosine alpha in for this you get plus d m cosine alpha equals c squared 
Okay, so we have these two equations um, that we just derived, this and this. And they both have cosine alpha in it. So since you don't want cosine alpha in our theorem right here in our equation, there's no cosines in there. We, let's just try isolating cosine alpha because we don't want it in our equation. So if you take the first equation, you get uh, cosine alpha plus b squared minus n squared plus d squared over negative 2 and d and to make it neater let's just like do it like d squared plus n squared minus b squared over 2 and d so the denominator is positive then you do the second one right here cosine alpha equals c squared minus d squared minus m squared over uh, 2md and you set these equal to each other because they're both equal to cosine alpha so we can set them equal to each other and then we uh, we have to make sure they have common denominators so um, m d squared plus m n squared minus m b squared equals n c squared minus n d squared minus n m squared so you have this equation so let's move let's make both sides positive squared equals n c squared minus n d squared minus n m squared plus m b squared okay so that we have a l interesting little equation right here so let's let's try to uh should it oh yeah yeah forgot something so we want to make uh, all the terms positive so we have like something neat and stuff so uh let's see so nc squared plus mb squared equals md squared plus mn squared plus nd squared plus nm squared. We want all the terms to be positive because in this thing, all the terms are positive. So we don't want, you know, anything weird. So a is basically m plus n. So uh, let's see what we can do here. So so it's basically m plus n times d so right here we have n plus n. like we have uh we have m d squared plus n d squared so we can turn that into uh d a d because it's d squared two d's and then m plus n is a so d a d and then here we have uh let's see n m n squared so here we have so this is m plus n times n n. So you factor out m n. Get this. This is equal to since this is equal to a, you get man. So you have dad plus man right there. Okay, and then you get sink from this because it's two c's, and then you get b and b. plus equals see so that's where that's how you derive the equation so uh if you ever get stuck on a annoying triangle problem uh here it is so just use this equation uh you know how to derive it in case you ever forget it so again that's dad plus man equals bond plus sink that's the stewart's theorem um thanks see you later hi guys it's daniel here and today i'm going to do another one of my homemade problems so let's first see what it is is. 100 points are drawn in a circle of radius 9. Prove that we can place a circle of radius 1 on a part of the radius 9 circle such that it contains at least two points. So, this problem states that if we have 100 points in this radius 9 circle here, then we can, we can place a radius 1 circle here such that it contains two points. So, first of all, how are we supposed to attack this type of problem? Well, one way to attack it is by using expected value. If the expected value of the number of points that are contained inside the radius 1 circle is slightly bigger than 1, then that means there must exist a placing of the circle to such that there are two 